what an emotional roller coaster it's been the last few weeks, and especially Sunday. Sunday was an absolute nightmare. Nobody performed in the side whatsoever. So now, a couple of days down the line, I'm going to have a quick woodpecker to chill out a bit. And I want to talk about the squad today, about what players I think should be going and which players I think Jack Ross should be keeping. Because we know now Jack Ross is staying as manager next season. I'm kind of on the fence with Jack Ross. I can see both sides of the argument. I can see people saying that, what has Jack Ross done to, to vindicate another season at Sunderland Football Club as the manager? What has he done? He's making the same mistakes over and over again. Always going 1 0, always a defending a 1 0 lead, then always getting beat to get in the draw. Always the same mistakes over and over again. We didn't get promoted with a good sizable squad. Decent players, a good budget, and he's failed. People want him out. That's the one side. You know, that's one side of the argument. And the other side of the argument is, is a young up-and-coming manager, he's going to learn from his mistakes. And people are saying, has he learned from his mistakes? He keeps making the same mistakes over and over again. Square pegs and round holes, sort of thing. And then you're saying... Well, yeah, but he's a young, up-and-coming manager. He's going he's gonna to make the mistakes. He started off with a tiny squad at the start. He's had to buy, rush by a load of players, bring them in the side, gel it together, and try and get a campaign going. And he's done quite well. He's finished, you know, in the playoffs for his first season in English League after playing in the Mickey Mouse Scottish League. You know, managing in that league for three or four years, or whatever it is, three years. Sorry for calling it Mickey Mouse, but compared to England, it is. So basically, there's both sides of the argument. So, if he was to go, I wouldn't be bothered. And if he was to stay, I'm not bothered either. I'll go with the floor. I'll go whatever what Stuart Donald wants in this. You know, he's a man. He owns the club. Whatever he wants, I'll be happy with. So Jack Ross to stay. Stay, I'm happy with that. Jack Ross to go, I'm happy with that too. Looks like he's staying. So it looks like we're going to have to put up with Jack Ross for another season. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that as in like... He's going to have to get in a good five or six players at least over the summer and get rid of quite a few players over the summer, get rid of all the dead wood and bring in some quality players. If we can get some quality players in from the championship, but our players are going to want to come to Sunderland. They're only going to come to Sunderland if we pay the cash to Spondoolies. That's the only way they're going to come to Sunderland. Have we got the backing now? Have we got the back as the investors? We're not, we're not like the bloody noisy neighbours up the road. Get, you know, could be getting those Qatar Arabs in. Billionaires, multi-billionaires up the road. We, we've got just small investors. But are, there, are we going to find some good investors who can invest some cash to pay the wages to get some quality players in so we can run away with this league next season? Well done to Martin Crowell. Top of the tree. The best Bloke with the sports noggin, sorry bloke, the best person, because there's females also doing the scores. The best, the best human being with the greatest sports noggin. Correct scores, top of the tree. He comes first, all the way from the Czech Republic. Get in touch via Twitter, the mad mistake, direct message. Get in Touch via Instagram, the mad mistake, direct message, and I'll sort you a t-shirt out, and we'll get one in the post here. Well done, absolutely amazing. You've been in the league for a long time, and you've stayed in the league. In the league, in the league, in the lead. Right, after watching that shower of shite on Sunday, to be honest, that on Sunday, I mean... I've watched lots of vlogs about the game, and there's there's a lot there's, there's a lot you know there's better vloggers out there with better football and brains than me. Check out SCFC David doing a good review of the match. You know it, it hit the nail of it on the head, spot on. Subscribe to his channel. You know worth watching. Matt MFC, you know great vlog again. It's worth watching and. and and Michael Bowers, check out his channel. You know, he had some questions off Twitter. He's done a really good 
blog or vlog or I call them videos. I'm not into this blogging and vlogging shit. I just call them videos. He, you know, he's a clever lad. They're all clever lads. Much more cleverer than me. I can barely work a phone, barely work a laptop, and sometimes I can I, I can hardly find the how to open a can of cider. <laughs> I've opened a few. But anyway, let's get down nitty gritty. Who are we going to keep and who are we going to get rid of? And them squad that we've had, the players that we've had, that pathetic game on Sunday, it was really garbage, one of the worst games. People say, oh, the players were over the top and Jack Ross' tactics were shit. You know? Playing the same system over and over again. Bringing McGeady into the middle rather on the wing. <coughs> Taking Maguire off, our, our, our most creative player. Gonna start with the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper John McLaughlin and a no-brainer, absolute no-brainer. One of the best players of the season. He definitely stays at Sun next season, so long as he wants to stay. 100%. Absolutely brilliant. Brilliant with the crosses. Brilliant chop stopper. A bit more coaching with his distribution. And you know, he's absolutely fantastic. He's had a great season. And uh, 10 out of 10 for John McLaughlin this season. Definitely stay at Sun next season. And the number two keeper, Max Steyrek, yes. <laughs> Max Steyrek should be the number two keeper next season for me. I agree with Michael Bowers. Great keeper. Definitely should stay at Sunderland Football Club and promote him to number two. We should bring him to the ranks, give him more coaching and get him with John McLaughlin as number John McLaughlin's backup. Definitely keep Max. Defenders, I agree with most. We need some big brick shit house defenders in our squad. Tom Flanagan. I don't dislike the bloke. I don't dislike... You know, originally apparently he was a right back. And he's been a makeshift centre back. So, I think I would keep Tom Flanagan. Because he could be a good right back. We're not quite sure. But I was going for... Jack Baldwin. I would get rid of Jack Baldwin. Let him go. You know, he's been okay some some parts of the game. But I, I, I just don't... I just don't think we have space in the squad for Tom Flanagan and Jack Baldwin, so I'll definitely get rid. Uh, pardon me. I don't think we have room in the squad for both Tom Flanagan and Jack Baldwin, so I'll definitely get rid of Jack Baldwin. Let him go somewhere else. He might do well somewhere else, so good luck to the bloke. But I think I'll keep Tom Flanagan, even though he has been a bit of a liability at times, but he could be a good right back. We're not quite sure. Alamos Turk has definitely been the best, ended up being the best out of a bad bunch of centre backs. I definitely keep Alamos Turk. I think he's starting to come into his own a little bit. I think another pre season with the squad, now he's used to League One, he might be more of an asset next season. So I'd keep Alamos Turk. Tom Flanagan, oh, 50 50 on borderline, not quite sure whether he should stay or should go. Jack Baldwin should go. Louvrens should go. We need to get a couple of brick shit houses in. Definitely big brick shit houses in. It's hard to say that sentence together. Well, you better a little bit of cider. But definitely, yes, definitely that's what we need to do. We need to get a couple of big brick Russian shit houses in. Stop them players coming through and waltzing through our defence next season. I'm really, I mean, as right back goes, Luke O9 has been a makeshift right back. But I don't want him to be a makeshift right back. I want him to play in midfield. I would keep. But to be honest, we need to get a couple of right backs. One good right back in this, this summer. And maybe it's two. And let Luke 09 go back into the midfield. Left left back, Hume's fine. I'm happy with Hume. He's going to come. He's going to progress. He's going to learn. He's going to get better and better and better. And hopefully next season, he'll flourish into a good left back. And I like Rhys James. I think Rhys James, he had, he had a good part of the season. You know, before we played Portsmouth, check a trade trophy, come down with an injury, and he's been hitting Missy ever since. You know, people get injured, you kind of blame them for that. I think, he'd be, I think he's a canny left back. I think he played some really good matches before before the Portsmouth match and check a trade trophy final. Yeah, he got injured a couple of matches before, and I think him and Hume will be decent left backs. I think a left back situation's covered. I think Oviedo is obviously going to go with the wages. He has to go with the wages. I don't think Methven. And Donald will keep him in the summer. And I think, to be honest, you know, good luck to the bloke. He lives on the corner at Ramside. I think he'll find a championship a championship side very easily if he wants to stay in England. If not, he'll go back. He'll find a good European club. He's a decent player. Oz, Oz Turk. 
He's a decent player over here, though. I like the bloke. Seems like a very nice, a very nice young man. And I think he'll do well somewhere else. But I think the wages it, it is the problem with us. Ozturk, what the fuck? The wages is definitely the plus. It's only 3.5%. The wages are definitely the problem with Oviedo. So Hume, Hume and James, get them fit and ready in the preseason for a good campaign next season. Our left back situation sorted out. Right back, we need a couple of right backs and a couple of good brick shit houses. Who can we bring in? Who can we bring in? I'll leave some comments down below. Which central defenders would you want to bring in? Matthews, again, contract's going to be up. He's on big wages. we let Matthews go. He's been injury prone. and uh, it seems that he, When he's fit, he's a decent player. But he picks up a lot of injuries. So we'll let, we'll, let, we'll let him go at the end of the season and save a bit of money that way. So that's the day. I'm not going to go into the, the youngsters or the under-23 squad because I think we could find some gems in the under-23 squad. Some good players out there. Players that have been on loan, players that are in the 23 squad, some good players there. We need to keep those players there, let them stick together, gel. We might find one or two gems. We've got Denver Hume. We might find one or two more gems. You know, we've got Marger through there, but he's gone. And that was one of the reasons why you know, he's still our top goal scorer in the season. Midfielders, Max Power. Definitely keep Max Power. I like his attitude. I think as he grows in confidence, I think Max Power could be our captain next season. Is potentially one of the candidates of our captaincy next season. Now, going to George Honeyman. George Honeyman is a lovely lad. In, in, in Series 1 of Southern to the Die, you know, he came through really well. He's come from that, from the youth squad. He's, sure, he's a good role model. You know, a brilliant role model for young kids to look up at and say, look what he's doing. He's come from, he's come from the North East, come through the youth system, and look what he's achieved. Regardless how we feel about his ability as a player, I think he's a fantastic young man. I think he's absolutely wonderful. And I personally want to keep him in the side. You know, keep him in the squad for next season. He, he, he's got the potential to be a good squad player still. And he's still only 24, I think. He can still learn and get better. It's been a long season. He's played a lot of games. There's a lot of running about. He burns up a lot of energy. You know, let him... Recharge the batteries over the summer. And let's, let's go again with George Honeyman next season. I think George, you know, players like George Honeyman know the club through and through. You know, the ins and outs. You know, he knows the fan base, what the fans want. He's a fan himself. So, I think George Honeyman should stay next season. But, he's not a captain. You know, regardless what anybody says, I do not believe George Honeyman is captain material. I think he was put in there as, as, as because there was nobody else around at the start of the season. And he's been left with this role. He's taken on his shoulders, you know, he's done his best. George Honeyman, you know, wears his heart on his sleeve. He's done his absolute best. I'm not going to ever slag off George Honeyman or put George Honeyman down. You know, I'm 100% behind him. He may not be the best, he may not have the best skill in the world. He may not be the best player in the world. But he's Sunderland through and through. You know, he played red and white. And we need players like that, like that in the squad to show the new players who have come in, to, to explain to them what it means to be a Sunderland player. We keep George Honeyman next season, regardless for me. This one, Lyndon Gooch. Lyndon Gooch, again, exactly the same. Through the academy, young American lad. And this season... He's shown some potential brilliance. I mean, he's got some wonderful goals. The first goal of the season against Charlton. What a great header. I think he's got a wonderful shot from outside the box against Manchester City. He's got some great goals this season. The one against Barnsley was absolute beautiful. Beauty. Now, the manager, Jack Ross, needs to sit down with, 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 with Lyndon Gooch. Sit down with the bloke, right? Young lad still. And say, look, Lyndon. We need... To find some way that you can use your ability. But at the end of the day, your job is to create and assist the strikers. As well as score goals yourself. Don't take on too many players. Don't try and be a Messi or a Ronaldo because you know you're not. But you still could be an asset to the club. You know, 
you can still learn a coach needs to sit down with this lad and say look at this is what we want you to do take on a player get past your man get the crossover that's what we need I still think I think Lyndon Gooch can still improve and still learn he's better than the North East he exactly knows what it means to be a Sunderland a Sunderland player he knows what the Sunderland fans want I will keep Gooch next season I'm not saying he's in the starting 11 but he'll be a good squad player oh, pardon me a good squad player again I like Lyndon Gooch I want to keep him at Sunderland next season for at least one more season see how it goes next player Grant Ledbetter again Sunderland through and through Sunderland until I die you know he just loves the club he loves the players he's 100% Sunderland but has he got another season in his legs? I don't think, for me, it'll be in my starting eleven next season. But I do believe there's a place at Sunderland Football Club for Grant Ledbetter. You know, I love the bloke. I think he's wonderful. I love his, you know, the passion he gives. He, give, he does give 100%. His legs might have gone now, but he gives 100%. And I, th I believe there's some coaching role there for Grant Ledbetter too, you know. The age he is now, Jack Ross should take him in the wing and give him a coaching role. You know, and even on the subs bench, there's a place for Grant Ledbetter. You know, I want him to stay at Sunderland Football Club next season. I really do. And go to Lee Catamore. Lee Catamore. What, what can you say about Lee Catamore? North East lad. Loves it in the North East. Doesn't want to leave Sunderland. He doesn't want to leave Sunderland. He loves Sunderland Football Club. Middlesbrough lad, but now he's moved. You know, now he, he, he's moved to Sunderland Football Club. He's been here for a lot of years now. He's on high wages. Will Catamore drop his wage and stay at Sunderland Football Club? Lee Catamore, if you do not want to move from the North East and you want to play for Sunderland Football Club next season, drop your wage. Go into talks with Stuart Donald. Get it down to a reasonable amount. Surely, you must be well off by now. You must have plenty of cash. Now you're just playing for fun. You've got to be just playing for fun. The love of the game, the love of the city, the love of the fans. Repay Sunderland Football Club a lot of fans out there, including myself, lovely Captain Wall. I love him to stay next season. You know, good break in the summer. Recharge the batteries. Get yourself back. Fit and well. You know, you put your body on the line. That's what you want from a player. You put your body on the line. You get a lot of injuries, a lot of knocks. You've had some injuries in the past. But you came back fighting. For me, you've had a good season. Being one of the best players this season. Wearing a shirt for some football club. I want you to stay next season. But if, if the wage, if the wage is a problem, do the, the good thing and just drop. You know, if you really want to stay in, in the at the club and you're really happy in the northeast, negotiate with Jack and Stewart and drop your wage down like the rest of the players, you know, and do your part. I know you will. I know you want to. Because we want you to stay at some football club. And potentially, again, with Max Power, another captain. Now we're going to Aidan McGee. You were quite unlucky, really, because Aidan McGee he had a wonderful a wonderful match at Wembley against Portsmouth. Scored three goals, played 120 minutes, plus the, you know, the penalties. The next match, he played when he probably shouldn't have played against Agrit and Stanley, and he got an injury, scored a goal, man of the match first half, come down with an injury, broke his foot. Never been the same player since. You kind of play, look at, this is one of the things that bugs the life out of me. You kind of play players who are fucking not fit, simple as. You know, there must be somebody in the squad who can take place of players, of in, injured players. I know what it's like. And I, I, I've ran competitively for 20 years. And I've got a couple of England vests that I've run for my club. You get an injury, you can't do it. Your footballers must be the same. You take knocks during a game. You cannot play the back of your mind, you pull out of tackles, you don't give it 100%, you aren't the same player. So for me, McGeady isn't to blame for what's happened in the last part of the season at all because he's had a broken foot, had to play, play through the pain barrier. You can't do that. You just cannot do it. I would love to see McGeady stay at Sunderland Football Club next season. Again, he lives in the North East. His kids are in North East schools. I love Aidan McGeady. I wasn't a massive fan last season, but this season he's grown on us, you know. I want him to stay, but again, it all comes down to wages. I don't know what the wage bill's like. And again, if McGeady is coming at the end of his career, if he wants to have one last good go in the championship, I wouldn't be good him going. But if he wants to stay at Sunderland Football Club, again, if it becomes wages, drop your wages a little bit. I'm sure you've made plenty of money. I know you've got a family look after. 
But at the end of the day, what makes you happy? What makes you the happiest? Playing at Sun and living in this area or making more money somewhere else. It's your choice, it's your life. But like I said, all Sunderland fans want McGeady to stay. I know, I'm sure they do. Right, next player. Who should we? Who have we got next? Who have we got next? Obviously, Lewis Morgan's going to go back because he's on loan. And will we have him another season? I'm not quite sure. Dylan McGeoch. I've never been a fan of Dylan McGeoch. I didn't know much about him before the season started. I've watched them all season. And we have too many players of the of a similar similar ilk. So for me, Dylan McGeoch can leave and go somewhere else. And I wish him all the best. I hope he has a great season somewhere else. But I, I personally wouldn't keep Dylan McGeoch. Luke O9. Who? Yeah, Luke O9. Absolutely fantastic personality. He gives everything to the cause. He's given everything this season. That lad has given everything to Sunderland Football Club this season. He isn't a natural right back. I mean, how are we supposed to get promoted to the next tier if we haven't even got a natural right back? I went right that right back. Matthews is injured, so we bring a midfielder in the right back. He's done a good job, a good solid job, but. For us to get promoted, we need a natural right back at the football club. I would definitely keep Luke O9. I mean, he, 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 you've seen him. He stays back after hours. He helps out with the kids, with the you know, with the juniors. He's absolutely amazing, amazing bloke. Changing the seats and everything, you know. It's the wonderful bloke, wonderful attitude, attitude for young people. The, uh, what a what a role model Luke O9 is for young people. Everybody loves Luke O9. So why would anybody want to go? It may, I mean, end of the day, it may not have the best talent. It may not make it in the championship, but in League One, he's still growing, he's still learning. He's ambitious. Why get rid of someone like that? We need to keep him at the club, but we need to play him in his proper position. He needs to work on that in the summer with the coaches, with Jack Ross. He may be able to play in that position next, next season. Even if it's on the subs bench and he comes on, or whether he grows, gets stronger, has a good pre-season, he could start in his natural role. But Luke O9 has to stay for me. Move on to Chris Maguire. I don't know anybody out there who wouldn't want Chris Maguire. Chris, Chris Maguire, Chris Maguire to stay at Sunderland Football Club. I don't know anybody out there who wouldn't want Chris Maguire to stay at Sunderland Football Club. On his day, he's brilliant. Scores some absolutely fantastic goals. That other people, that other strikers out there wish they could do. He's got brilliance. Absolutely brilliant. I'm not sure where sometimes maybe he's best coming off the bench, you know, because he has such an impact on the game. But he has shown some brilliance this season. And the attitude. Absolutely fantastic attitude for me. Chris Maguire, the king, has to stay at Sunderland Football Club next season. Definitely 100%. Now, Duncan Watmore... Again, he's in the same category as Lyndon Gooch. Another player gets his head down, tries to take on two or three players. Dunga Watmore, again, is an absolute brilliant role model to any young and up-and-coming footballer. I love him the bits, Duncan Watmore. He's an intelligent lad, brilliant lad. He suffered with some horrible injuries, really bad injuries. You know, And I wish he'd never get injured, and I hope he never gets injured again. He's absolutely a wonderful. For me, he's a star. I don't want more. But whether he can stay injury free is another thing. And is he worth keeping at the club if he's always going to be injured? They're the decisions. I don't know. It's Jack Ross and the physio team. But for me personally, if it's a fit, Duncan want more. If he stays fit, he's an asset to the club. But again, get the coaches with him. Train and learn him how to get his head up and pass the ball. His job, like Lyndon Gooch, is assistant. You know, strikers. They, they can they can score goals. Yes, Duncan Watmore. You know, his class is the striker, but he's not now now striker. But with a good pre-season, injury free, he may well shine next season. It's worth another chance for me. You know, it's definitely worth another season, Duncan Watmore. It comes down now to the strikers. And let's face it, we don't have much, do we? For me, Charlie Wake again. 
He's a really nice bloke. I think he gives 100%. He's been injury prone. But for an out and out striker, he's not for me. So personally, I let Charlie White go. And he, he may well do well somewhere else. I wish him all the best wherever he goes. But for me, Charlie White is not an out and out striker. He's scored two or three goals in the season. I know he hasn't played all season. He's been injury prone. But still, it's not enough. It's not enough for a striker. We need better from a striker. And heading the ball, he just gets some head. He does just, he just head the ball every now and again. And he's a big unit. But it's not enough. No enough for me. We need we need a better quality of straggle up front. You know, I know we're not going to find Gabby Danis, we're not going to find Phillips. But if we can find someone, you know, three quarters or half as good as those two, it's still better than Charlie White for me. So I'd personally let Charlie White go. But it's all about opinions. This is just my opinions. You'll have different opinions out there. Leave your opinions in the you know in the comments below. Now Will Grigg, Will Grigg has come with a big reputation. He's had some fantastic seasons and he knows where the goal is. Look at look at the seasons he's had with Wigan. You know, he scores a shitload of goals, but he's come he's come to Summer Football Club with an ankle injury, apparently. So the whole of the time he's been here from January up until fucking Wembley now in May, he's had an ankle injury. Why do we buy players that are injured? I know we're under pressure. Why why do we even Buy players on deadline day. Why do we have to wait to deadline day? That's another bug bearer. I hate deadline day. Why do we buy players deadline day? A rush, panic buy. You know, bugs the life out of me. And playing players with injuries. What is the point? If he's had an injury from January to now, ankle injury, you can't play 100%. You can't be at the top of your game. You can't be. You know the real Grigg, who was on fire for Wigan. If you're injured, you're not going to give you all. So if, that, if that's the reason it hasn't been the real Will Grigg who's been on fire, then it may well be worth keeping him over the summer, the four million we spent. Get him fit. Get him raring to go. Get him a good pre-season and see what happens next season. But it all depends if Jack Ross is talented enough. If Jack Ross has the fucking brains to play to Will Grigg's strengths, there's no point having him in the team if we're not going to give him any assists at all. And all he's doing is feeding off scraps. He needs to have the balls to his feet to score the goals. Now, if Jack Ross cannot get the system to service Will Grigg, there's no point Will Grigg being in the side. If that's the case, he's got to be sold. But if Jack Ross can get the team, if he knows to get the system, knows how to get the players to feed Will Grigg a fit 100% Will Grigg who scored all of them goals for Wigan, then he's worth keeping. That's just my opinion yet again. I'm a little bit pissed off at this moment in time with Charlie Metham, what he said after the match. We need to get realistic, he says. Sunderland fans need to get realistic. Charlton are a bigger club than Sunderland. They had 40,000 fans at Wembley and we only had 34. For fuck's sake, Charlie, man. We've been there once before. We've travelled hundreds of fucking miles. Charlton's in fucking Wembley. Never mind get fucking realistic. You pay the fucking cash and a lot of these fans would go down. I barely only... You know, I only went down because I had really good friends who could support me. And thank you very much yet again on GoFundMe page. Supporting me to go to Wembley for doing my vlog. The wages aren't fucking massive in the northeast compared to London wages. Charlton down there is in fucking London. I bet a lot of, the, a lot of them fans down there is like me travelling to Sunderland in a match on a Saturday. That's what it's like for them. And we've got to spend a whole day travelling. And then the trains put the fares up. 50%, 100% sometimes, cost a fucking fortune to go to Wembley, man. And we need to get realistic. Of course, Charlton is a wonderful club, but Sunderland is a bigger club in my eyes, complete bigger club, and I'll back the fans 100%. They cannot afford to go to Wembley. And when they go to Wembley, they get fucking beat. So never mind you, Charlie Meffin, with all your fucking spondoolies, your cash. Criticising Sunderland fans for not going to Wembley. Remember where fucking Charlton is, man, on the map. Remember where Sunderland is. You fucking think before you open your fucking gob.
Sunderland is a massive club. We've got fantastic fan base. All clubs have good fan bases, but we've got an amazing fan base. That away following we have week in, week out. You know, sell out away matches every single other weekend is amazing. So don't criticise the fans of Sunderland Football Club, Charlie. Don't criticise the Sunderland fans. We are a big club, yes. And we are in League One. And we may have to lower our expectations. Like you said, we have to lower our expectations. And we have done. But we want to get back up there in the Championship. 46,000 fans. Remember, Charlie, you were, you were congratulating 46,000 fans on Boxing Day. A record in League One. These fans really do deserve better. So you really you should apologise for what you said. But, end of the day, like I said, the fans are still backing you and they're backing Stuart Donald. We want you both to succeed. But you really need to learn to think before you open your mouth, especially straight after a match when we're being beaten and emotions are running high. We do, we, see, we all say things we don't really mean. Money is tight. We work all the week. We work all the week to watch Sun Football Club. And we don't need to take that from you, Charlie. We really don't. Right, that's my vlog. That's the players I'd keep and let go. I know I haven't covered all the players. But, hey ho. Sun until we die and we go again next season. I'm sure Jack Ross can find some really good quality brick shit house defenders out there. A couple of really good strikers. A player me in mid. A playmaking midfielder. I'm sure he'll build his squad. I'm hoping they can find the backing to have the funds to build the team so we can win League One next season. I was I was absolutely gutted. I've never been so depressed in my life after a match on Sunday. That's the lowest I've ever been. I've been to some I've been to Lori Mac many me days when it was absolute dire. But on, I've never been that downhearted before in my life. But now, it's done. We move on next season. We have to believe that we can come back fighting. And Jack Ross, Charlie Methvin and Stuart Donald can build a squad capable of winning League One. And I'll see you all later.